One of my favourite open world games from the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 era of gaming was without a doubt Sleeping Dogs. If Grand Theft Auto had martial arts and was heavily inspired by John Woo films, this is probably what it would have looked like. Sleeping Dogs came at a great time during my life, when my interest in martial arts and action movies such as The Raid was at its peak. The more I got into this game, the more it grew on me and it really appealed to that side of me that wanted a game where I could play through a gritty martial arts action movie fantasy. Though other games have come along to satiate that need ever since, such as Sifu and Midnight Fight Express, Sleeping Dogs has still remained one of my all-time favourite games, and I feel like we were truly robbed of a sequel. Today, I'd like to explore Sleeping Dogs, talk about my fondness for this game, and share the reasons why I still find myself going back to it every now and then. So, let's get into it. Here is my video looking back on Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs is a crime thriller set in modern day Hong Kong, where you play as undercover cop Wei Shen. Wei is assigned with the task of infiltrating a triad organization known as the Sun On Yi in order to destroy them. He walks the line between good and bad, trying to uphold his duties as a police officer while also committing crimes with triads to maintain his cover as he rises through the ranks of the organization. Along the way, he finds himself getting more and more attached as he progresses through his journey, developing friendships and bonds with members of the organization, leaving Wei's superiors in the police force and the player themselves questioning his true loyalties. Sleeping Dogs began development under the publisher Activision as a part of the True Crime franchise. A series which received mixed reviews and only lasted from 2003 to 2005, Sleeping Dogs was first revealed to the public under the title True Crime Hong Kong in 2009 before eventually it was cancelled. Thankfully, however, development on the game was revitalised after publisher Square Enix acquired the rights to it. They renamed the game Sleeping Dogs and with that, development on the project began once again. Even though I personally have some gripes towards Square Enix as a company, I'm still pretty grateful that they saw enough potential in this game to continue development on it, otherwise we might never have gotten it. The game was finally released in 2012, and unlike the other games in the True Crime franchise, Sleeping Dogs received favourable reviews from critics and went on to become a cult classic. I eventually got around to playing the game for the first time during 2014 on the Xbox 360 and had a great time with it, but it wasn't until I purchased the definitive edition of the game on Steam years later that my fondness and appreciation for it further deepened. Though I'm glad that we managed to get this game, I'm still kind of disappointed that we never got a true sequel, as I feel like Sleeping Dogs could have been the start of a potential new franchise. The developers United Front had plans for a sequel, but unfortunately, those plans were scrapped before the project went into production. They also tried to create a Sleeping Dogs MMO, weirdly enough, named Triad Wars, which actually had a beta that you could play. However, Triad Wars was shut down months later, presumably because there weren't enough fans of the original Sleeping Dogs that were interested in it. Any hopes for Sleeping Dogs to continue as a gaming franchise died with Triad Wars. However, they announced in 2017 that they were going to adapt the game into a live action movie starring Donnie Yen as Wei Shen. Hey, that rhymes. Apparently the movie is still in development with Donnie Yen mentioning back in 2020 that Sleeping Dogs was going to be his next challenge and that he wanted it to be yet another breakthrough movie for him. I know that video game movie adaptations usually aren't good in the slightest, but I still kinda hope that the Sleeping Dogs movie ends up getting made. I've liked Don Yen in everything that I've seen him in so far, and I feel like the story of Sleeping Dogs is perfect for a movie. Plus, if the movie ends up being successful, then maybe we might just get a new game. Anyway, now that all of the exposition is out of the way, let's get into the meat of this video. 
The gameplay in Sleeping Dogs is fantastic, and my favourite aspect of this game is absolutely the combat system. It's similar to the Batman Arkham games, except with like, over-the-top, gory violence. I mean, come on, can you do this as Batman? Didn't think so. You have a variety of attacks and combos at your disposal during fights. You can even acquire melee weapons such as knives, which have a limited durability, as well as guns that have limited ammunition. You also have the ability to counter attacks, perform finishing moves, and execute your enemies using the environment. Some environmental takedowns are kinda morbidly funny, such as beating people to death using a payphone and throwing them into aquariums. Oh, speaking of aquariums, did I also mention that you can kill people with a live fish? There are also fight clubs you can participate in, with one located in each of the four districts. I really enjoy these. Every now and then I'll boot up this game just to spend a few minutes participating in the fight clubs whenever I need to scratch that itch for this game's combat system. You can also unlock new skills as you progress throughout the game and gain more experience with two different skill trees you can invest in. The first involves police-centric abilities, while the second is based more around the criminal side of things. Some of my favourite abilities include being able to disarm enemies of guns and fire your gun in slow motion while jumping out of a moving vehicle. Like many open world games, you can also navigate the city using vehicles such as cars and motorcycles. Sleeping Dogs has some pretty fun vehicular based combat where you can ram your car into others, shoot in slow motion while driving and jump out of a moving vehicle onto another moving vehicle and hijack it. It's so over the top and I love it. I have many fond memories of just simply driving around this game on a motorcycle, exploring the open world while listening to the radio. You can also navigate the open world using parkour, a mechanic that features most prominently in certain missions where you have to chase a suspect. It's possible to mess up during these chases, slowing you down, so you usually have to time everything perfectly as you're vaulting over objects or climbing up walls. The main storyline takes roughly around 15 hours to complete, divided into 30 main story missions. However, there is a variety of side content too, such as cop missions, drug busts, things like that. The game had a lot of story DLC, such as Nightmare in North Point, Zodiac Tournament, and Year of the Snake, which takes place after the main story. I'll admit, I haven't played much of the DLC for this game, but I did finish the Zodiac Tournament and I remember having some fun with it. Though none of the DLC was particularly memorable for me personally, when thinking back on this game, I'm more likely to recall the missions from the main storyline instead. With my two favourite missions being The Election because it has such a gritty, badass cinematic vibe, and my second favourite being The Wedding because... <laughs> uh, well, I'm not going to spoil what The Wedding's about, but holy goddamn shit. If you know, you know. In my opinion, The Wedding is definitely one of the story's most powerful moments. But anyway, that's enough about the gameplay. Let's move on to discussing some of my other favourite aspects of this game. Another aspect of this game that I really enjoy is the art direction. The city of Hong Kong feels very distinct in this game. I've never been to Hong Kong in real life before, so I don't really know what it's actually like, but Sleeping Dogs portrays the city in a way where it feels like it has a lot of character to it. It's a very refreshing change of pace compared to most other open world crime games which are usually set in American cities. In particular, I love it whenever it rains in this game. The city has such a cool vibe to it whenever it's drenched in rain, populated with hundreds upon hundreds of colourful neon signs and fog. That very atmosphere makes the various street brawls you can choose to engage in a lot cooler and cinematic. One of my favourite areas in this game that helps highlight the game's gritty neon vibe is Club Bam Bam. There are four missions which use the club as a setting, and those are always pretty fun as it's such a cool setting for various fight scenes, kinda like the nightclub shootout from the first John Wick movie. Club Bam Bam also features in the game's live action trailer, which, might I add, is probably my favourite live action trailer for any video game. Ever. No joke. I have a lot of nostalgia for this trailer, and the filmmakers did a, such a fantastic job portraying what it feels like to play the game. 
I highly recommend watching it if you have any interest in the game whatsoever. Plus, the song that plays during the trailer's main fight scene slaps so hard, and to this day, I still like to listen to it from time to time. The game's art style is also really cool too. It features a lot of really warm yet aggressive colours such as red and orange, particularly in the game's various menus. Speaking of which, the menus also incorporate Wei Shen's various tattoos, which I find to be a really nice touch. In particular, Wei's smartphone wallpaper depicts his dragon tattoo, and the main menu features a collage of most of his tattoos. That's another aspect of the game I really love too, the character design for Wei Shen. Out of all the video game characters I've gotten to know over the years, Wei has my favourite tattoos in all of gaming. They fit the character so well and have such a nice aesthetic. Out of all his tattoos, my favourite has to be his dragon tattoo, which curves around his arm, goes over his shoulder and onto his chest. Would definitely get that tattoo in real life if I wasn't such a coward. I also love the eagle tattoo which he has on the other side of his chest and his three shuriken tattoos on his left forearm which gets bloodier and bloodier as they go. I think what I love most about Wei's tattoos is that they help further characterize him. Most of his tattoos are heavily rooted in his Chinese culture, yet he also has an eagle tattoo which symbolizes his time that he spent in America. He also has a memorial tattoo dedicated to his sister depicting a portrait of her. Just by looking at him and his tattoos, you can already tell what sort of character he is. I love it when fictional characters have tattoos because they are a great tool to use when it comes to visual storytelling and Sleeping Dogs does this perfectly. Sleeping Dogs is an overall well-rounded game and it's definitely one of my all-time favourites. I really wish we could have gotten a sequel, but I'm at least grateful that what we already have is fantastic enough on its own. I honestly can't think of anything to really criticise this game for, it feels like everything it set out to achieve, it achieved perfectly, from the tone, atmosphere, gameplay, and more. This game has given me a lot of great memories over the years, and I know that it will continue to for even more years to come. If you like open world crime games, story driven games, martial arts, Arkham style fighting systems, or anything of the sort, then I highly recommend giving Sleeping Dogs a try. I believe it's a masterpiece truly worthy of becoming a franchise, and without a doubt, it is a must play. I'm interested in hearing what anybody else out there has to say about this game. What do you think? Do you agree? Or maybe there's another aspect of this game that you liked that I didn't mention in this video. Whatever it is, feel free to comment below. I'm looking forward to seeing what you all think. But with that out of the way, thanks for watching.